Welcome to Pause on Purpose. This is our final day of the dashboard gauges or the grace that God produces in us to help us maintain the unity. Isn't it beautiful? Think about it. God gives us the gift of unity, and then he empowers us with all these attributes to maintain it. Think about it. All we have to do is say, Lord, here I am. I give myself to you to maintain the unity of the body of Christ where I am worshiping with other believers. Use me today to be humble, gentle, patient, forbearing, loving, diligent, and today, peaceful. Help me to be an instrument of peace, says St. Francis of Assisi, right? What a great prayer that is. If you don't know what it is, Google it, you'll find it. What is peace? It's a cessation of warfare, and it all begins with God. When he extended terms of peace to us through the Lord Jesus Christ, the Apostle Paul in Romans 5 says, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul picks up that idea of peace in Ephesians chapter 2, just two chapters before the chapter we're in, and shows how Christ is our peace. Now he personifies it and says Christ is our peace. And if Christ is our peace, there's no more dividing wall between Jew and Gentile. It's not a Jewish church. It's not a Gentile church. It's not a white church. It's not a black church. It's not a rich church. It's not a poor church. It's just the church. And it's called to peace, first and foremost, with God, then with others in the church body. And then we are to engage our world to extend the offer of peace to this dying world the way that Jesus Christ extended peace to us. Isn't that beautiful? And that's how we know that we are being diligent to preserve the unity of the Spirit. It's by checking these dashboard gauges. Where am I at, Lord? How am I doing? And again, it's not what us that we're producing. it. We're just saying, Lord, are these things real in my life? And that's where a good, solid Christian relationship, like in a small group, whether it's two or three or five or 10, and you get together and you pray together and you talk about these things, that is a very healthy exercise. And I encourage you to do that. You don't need anyone's permission. Just go ahead and do it. Pray together, encourage each other. Hey, have a meal together. Talk about what God is doing in your life. Talk about the struggles. That, you know what? I'm having a hard time with being patient, right? As I shared a couple of days ago. So remember, all these attributes to preserve the unity are produced in and through us, not by us, not by our fellow Christian, but by our Lord Jesus Christ, by the person of the Holy Spirit who indwells us. Beloved, I can't think of a better mission to be a part of than enjoying this abundant life that God gives to us. This abundant life of gentleness, humility, patience, forbearance, love, diligence, and peace. I tell you, anyone living this way, they're enjoying life because they know it's not about them. And it's not about trying to control things or agendas or making sure that we're in the right seat so we can sit to the right person, next to the right person, and get our agenda across. It's not about making sure we have all the, all the right ducks in a row when it comes down to a decision not about our agendas. It's not about our self-glorification. It's about the glory of Jesus Christ. And beloved, that's when you know 
you're going with God. And we know the results. He goes with us. Amen? Love you, beloved. Take care.